Welcome back to The Best Years. What would you do if a loved one with dementia or autism became lost? Would they be able to get help for themselves? The ID PUP system is a simple, discreet means of communicating important contact information to help bring loved ones home again. With me today are Drew Daganel and Sandy Demery of the Detect Group, makers of ID PUP. Welcome to The Best Years. Thanks very much. Thank you for having us. So Sandy, what exactly is IDPUP? How would you describe the product? IDPUP is a system of identification that's discreet, low-tech, and very easy to use. It consists of a graphic of a pointer dog right, that is uh, basically printed on uh, uh, pe apparel okay, that is actually showing okay, the um, location of important contact information. ICE, in case of emergency information, can be located on the heat transfer patch located underneath the ID pub graphic. Right? It's very simple and it's very easy to use. And so people actually write in their contact information with an indelible marker? That's correct. The, the, the parent or loved one, uh, excuse me, the parent or the caregiver, okay, can easily write in with an indelible marker. And this is more discreet than wearing a tag around your neck or a bracelet? Very much so. It doesn't yell, I'm different. Okay, um, it's easy to use, it's comfortable, right, and uh, it, there, there's no tactile defensiveness as far as that's concerned. So Drew, who needs ID Pup? Who's it really designed to help? ID Pup was conceived and designed to help those who cannot communicate very easily. Uh, for instance, somebody with Alzheimer's uh, who is a little confused, uh, or a child with autism. And somebody very close to you came up with this idea. How did this yes. idea evolve? Uh, my wife, Carola, uh, is a physical therapist, got her doctorate in physical therapy, and has worked in the field for better than 30 years, mostly with children uh, who have severe cognitive challenges, all right, and hence are not able to uh, communicate. So what was it she was seeing in her work that made her think that this idea would be important? Uh, Corolla has seen a number of instances uh, where children would uh, run from their houses, uh, run from their parents in a store, uh, going to Disney World, okay, and all of a sudden disappearing in a crowd and not having the ability to communicate uh, causes a lot of angst in the family. And also we hear stories of older, older adults with dementia or Alzheimer's just wandering off, so that it's designed for them as well, of course. Yes, I, we've gotten quite a bit of interest here in Ocean County uh, with all of the uh, senior communities. Uh, the first responders here really love the idea of ID Pup. So Sandy, what are some of the products? We already saw a t-shirt. What other products can you have ID Pup put on? You, you also have a, a bathing suit? Yes, we have a bathing suit for children. Uh, this is for little girls here. Uh, consists of uh, the ID Pup logo, as you can see, and on, on the inside, in the case it's always going to be a flyback for little girls, you have the contact uh, information patch. The uh, apparel consists of t shirts, um, uh, polo shirts, long sleeve tees. Uh, we have uh, labels and tags that can be applied uh, to backpacks or to zipper pulls. And can people also have the ID Pup sewn into their own garments? That's very important. Uh, we found that um, uh, very early on that there are many cases where patients uh, uh, with Alzheimer's, for instance, would only wear what they're very happy or, or comfortable used wearing. To. Right, what they're used to. All right, so we apply the contact information system uh, to the own apparel. So people just ship their clothes to you, you apply it and ship them back? That's correct. Right. And Drew, how are you getting the word out about ID Pep? I mean, the pointer dog is a very cute logo, but if people don't know what it means, they're not going to know how to help somebody who's wearing it. Right. What are you doing to get out the word? Well, that was a decision that we made uh, very early on in the uh, sort of the run of what we were going to do. And I have spent the last two years uh, and more going to first responders, visiting police stations in as many cities and towns around the tri-state areas I can get to. I give them training information and let them train their own internal forces. Uh, they come back to me with questions. I also do presentations. And what kind of information should people write inside where the ID goes, where the contact information goes? Because mm -hmm. there's always concerns with putting children's name on clothing and for safety issues. What, what do people put in there? 
For the most part, uh, in a parent's case, they're only putting the child's first name and their uh, cell phone number for emergency contact. Uh, they can also put other information regarding uh, the disability if they want to. That is totally up to the parent we, or the caregiver. We don't make that choice. Yeah. And Sandy, this is, this is designed to provide an extra layer of security and comfort for families who have a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia. We, we do, again, hear those stories so often of people right. wandering off, and sometimes they can't answer questions on their own. Right, the newspapers are filled with them every day. The, uh, the IDPUF system of identification basically is another layer of care. There are quite a few other uh, systems of identification out there consisting of bracelets or necklaces and so forth, um, but the, uh, they can be easily removed, right? Mem uh, ID cards can be lost or not taken with them, right? This system is applied to the clothing, which they're going to wear, right, and it's there all the time. So you're hoping for many successful reunions on those cases where family members are worried about a ch either a child or an elderly person becoming that's, separated. That's the best case scenario and that's yes. what we're all hoping for. Yes. Drew Dagonall, Sandy Demery, thank you so much for being on The Best Years today. Thank, thank you. you. Now for more information about the ID PUP system of identification, log on to idpup.com or call 732-963-9600. Since 1881, the American Red Cross has been the nation's premier emergency response organization, and today it continues to train volunteers in emergency preparedness, first aid, and safety. First aid training and CPR, they're the frontline defense we need in our homes and offices to help save the lives of the people we know and love. No organization trains more people nationwide than the American Red Cross. Each year, thousands of Ocean and Monmouth County residents take advantage of many diverse courses offered by the Jersey Coast chapter of the Red Cross. Our goal is to have one person in every family trained in first aid and CPR and it's so important because you know that's the message of the American Red Cross is life-saving and emergency response and it is so important for people to be trained so that they can save lives and they can they have the power to do that and the Red Cross empowers people to take our classes and get involved with our mission and our message and I think it's so important just because I know that I have the power to do that you know if there was ever a scenario that was to pop up in my everyday life that I can save someone's life you know whether it be a loved one someone I know or a stranger but you know it's so important to be able to do that because a couple seconds can make all the difference in the world. Taught by volunteer instructors, students of all ages can learn everything from basic home first aid to advanced CPR. As a former emergency medical technician, I know from personal experience just how important first aid training is for everyone. We know unfortunately that accidents happen all the time. Sudden cardiac arrest happens 250,000 times a year with only a 5% chance of survival. So what's imperative in making sure that we have a good outcome is early intervention and early help. So taking a American Red Cross CPR and first aid class really gives you the training you need. It instills the confidence that we're not gonna ask you to perform open heart surgery on a sidewalk. And it really lets people have the skills they need to be able to make that critical difference. More than 97% of the American Red Cross's workforce are volunteers, and they're not just certified medical professionals. They're men and women from all walks of life who want to help and make a difference. We're always looking for volunteers that are interested in, you know, even doing our events. We need to raise funds so that we can continue to be able to assist people 
locally so you know even people for events that are interested in getting involved with planning events or the day of an event or a community event like marching in a parade or giving a presentation about the Red Cross. We're always looking for people that are interested in getting involved with us. If hands-on volunteering is not for you, there are still plenty of ways you can help the organization that helps so many people both nationwide and around the world. Our senior citizens actually make up a very large portion of our volunteer base. Um, they're great. Uh, they even volunteer in disaster response. One of our volunteers in particular, he takes care of all of our 17 vehicles that Red Cross has here at the chapter. To learn more about how the American Red Cross can help you, or how you can help the Red Cross through donations or volunteering opportunities, visit their Jersey Shore Regional website at jerseycoast-redcross.org. Or to find an American Red Cross chapter near you, log on to redcross.org. Reporting from Tinton Falls, I'm Roseanne Durso. Next up, we're flying high. We'll be right back.